This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. This episode is brought to you by Jira. Jira is the only project management tool you need to plan and track work across any team. So if you're a team of developers, Jira better connects you with teams like marketing and design so you have all the information you need in one place. Plus, their AI helps you knock out the small stuff so you can focus on delivering your best work. Get started on your next big idea today in Jira. This is the TJ Show. I encourage you to take this as a warning. There was an extremely bold move made in my home yesterday <laughs> by a senior citizen wolf. Okay, we have a wolf. We have two wolves inside of our house. All right. One is 11 years old, almost 12. The other one's a puppy. The puppy was much better behaved than the older wolf. I have a dog named Luna. She's got a big smelly mouth. She's still cute from certain angles. She's a great pup. Yeah, you love her. I do. Producer Heather, when she comes over for dinner, she doesn't care that she has just horrible breath. She puts her face right in Luna's face and starts... You actually are the only person I know who lets my dog lick your face, and she really appreciates it. <laughs> it's not because she loves you, it's because you had some food on your lips. Because she's such a good girl. My six-year-old daughter, Willa, turned on the TV, was expecting to have a peaceful time, started getting herself all comfy... She put a cupcake, the last cupcake to be exact, right on the uh, the couch. Turned her back for a second. You can't turn your back on a cupcake when you have an untrustworthy wolf in the house. You just can't do this. I mean, you can't turn your back on me when you have a cupcake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's not the wolf's fault. So uh, my daughter, Willa, now this starts very sad, but it, it quickly makes a turn and you'll hear why. Can you calm down and tell me what happened? Because I want to hear about this. No, I'm just going to translate. Luna ate my cupcake. I caught that, yeah. Our dog. Luna's the only one left. The only one left. Can I give you a hug? She ate it whole. She didn't even chew it. Didn't even chew it, ate it whole. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just the ultimate gross, selfish move. She's not even enjoying the cupcake. Just swallowed it in one bite. Luna ate my cupcake. How did Luna get a hold of your cupcake? Where was it? It was on the sides of the couch, and she just ate it. She lifted up her tongue and just ate it. You put it on the side of the couch? Mm-hmm. Do you want to make any sort of an announcement to anyone who has a dog? Never let a dog eat your cupcake because it'll just ruin your day. So never let a dog eat your cupcake. It'll ruin your day. Mm-hmm. Well, that's very nice of you to make that announcement. I think that's going to help someone, okay? She's the rudest. Is there anything I could do to help? Yes, you can buy us something. I can buy you something? Yes, on the TV. What is it? Sing 2. She wants me to order her Sing 2. Oh, man. I didn't. You know, Sing 2 can fix a lot of problems. That's another good thing to take note of. It's one of the greatest movies ever made. Not yeah. only did she call Luna the rudest, but now she's trying to have you buy her a movie. Yeah, well, you know, she's presented me with a very easy solution. Man. And it's hard to say no to these. You can order it. Yay! <laughs> Love you, Willa. Love you too, Dada. Are you, are you happy now? I'm happy! All right, great, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to shake, off, oh, shake off the lost cupcake, and that's what she did. This is a seasoned veteran with an untrustworthy dog. Clearly, she's been taken advantage of by our dog a number of times in the past, and she realizes she can't get it out of Luna's belly. And it's, it's a done deal, man. Yeah, I mean, she, she's usually very protective of her food. I'm ashamed of what Luna's done here. It's really rude. She is the rudest. No, she's not. It won't be the last time she does it either. Well, if I have anything to do with it, I never put anything down near her. Oh, never. Why would you do that? She's just got that. You know how like a much older person doesn't care about almost anything? Well, Luna's in that phase. <laughs> That's where she's at. Yeah. Yes, producer Heather. To me, it sounds like Willa didn't accidentally leave the cupcake. She wanted to watch Sing 2 more than she wanted to eat the cupcake, if you know what I'm saying. I don't know if she's that strategic. Wow. Um, producer Heather. Yeah, this is the TJ show. J-Bo, now did you yell at the person? 
No, you know, I try to keep it very demure. You know what I'm saying? Very classy, very you, fancy. You were upset by what you saw. And, I, you know, I can relate to this. Yeah, man. So I pulled up to our favorite coffee spot, the one that we frequent very often. And I went by myself this time, not with the crew. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Sorry, homie. And when I pulled up, I found a parking spot, like, really close to the door. And I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to pull in. Skrr! I couldn't pull in. There was a woman standing in the parking spot and we made eye contact me and her okay so this is very offensive because you know you see this at the malls especially during the holidays people will stand in a spot Mm -hmm. and you know it's wrong but Mm -hmm. you like can kind of feel their pain it's really hard i never think it's okay but in a parking lot for a cafe there you can walk i mean how far is the furthest spot Uh, that's true it's not that far very not very (laughs) far really not a walk even though I wanted the closest spot to the door, still no no spot in that lot is very very far from the front door. No, it's victorious in that if you get that spot, it does feel good yeah, to be in the closest. Yeah, and it was packed. Like it was a packed <laughs> right. lot that it's day. It's just a principle of it, but yeah, we don't need the closest spot. Exactly. So I decided to not yell at her or make a scene. I drove down, parked in a different spot. And of course, I'm, I'm low-key upset. I'm just like, that's ridiculous. She doesn't need to do that. I get out of my car, and as I'm walking to the door of the coffee shop, I'm watching this woman. I want her to know that I see her. <laughs> and she, she allowed a car to park in that spot that she was standing in. And I'm like, what? Why didn't you let me park there? That's her friend. Yeah. In the spot. Right. And as I was getting worked up in my mind and creating a story about this woman, I see this guy getting out of the driver's seat with jumper cables in his hands. And he walks over to her car and he starts jumping her car. And oh, I'm like, you wow. know what? Sometimes I, you know, we make assumptions. I'm speaking for myself. I can't speak for you without knowing the entire story. And I had assumed yeah. that she was just being a jerk. And she wasn't. She, her car wasn't starting and she was waiting for help. You know what, Jabo? Shame on myself for assuming. Well, shame on me yeah. too. And, and, and you know what? How dare you set me up to feel those bad feelings <laughs> about that no, nice that's lady. You. you. You control your actions. You know what? You just told that story and I was with you. And I was like, yeah, that's right, Jabo. Be mad at her. Don't say anything, you know, because you're still nice. But right. yeah, I just assume the worst too. Isn't yeah. that crazy? It, 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 it's, that's what we do though. We create these stories in our heads, whether it be with like complete strangers. I don't know this woman from Adam, right? Yeah. Or we do it with our friends or our family members. And then we find out the entire story. We're like, oh, And then there are times where we don't find out the entire story and then we're mad for years. And it's like a waste waste of time because I'm sure there's always a reason for every single action. Sure, yeah. Relationships, friendships with Mm -hmm. people we do know have been destroyed because we assume they said something or they think something about us. Happens all the time. Yeah, so I've uh, I've obviously got some growing to do, J-Bo. Thank you for that reminder. No problem. Oh, and thank you for this. Producer Heather just gave me soft, sentimental music. (laughs) That is appropriate. I'm... I'm thankful for this moment in time, Kenny, Mr. Assumer. I anything you want to say? Think that's the one legitimate excuse for that woman's actions. The one thing that mm-hmm. I think would be passable would be that situation. Yeah. So you often create stories in your head about people, right? Oh, for sure. You react on them, uh-huh. even though they're wrong. Why is yeah. DJ calling yeah. you out, yeah, Kenny? Yeah, <laughs> Kenny's very good at it. I know this about him. I don't like a lot of people for no reason. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Well, now you can change, Kenny. There's hope. <laughs> Jabo, as I bring this up, I hope that I'm not risking being tied to a wooden plank in the future and then having robots surgically implant wires into me. Okay, I didn't know that's where you were heading. I thought you were going to talk about pirates. No, this is not about pirates. I saw a movie trailer yesterday, and it struck me as shocking. It's a kid's movie. What movie was it for? Have you seen the trailer for The Wild Robot? I did. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. Yeah, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I just think it's weird. Just weird? I think it's weird. I think that from what I saw, the previews that I saw, it's wanting people or kids, because that's what, who it's catered to, to have sentiments for this robot. They seemingly want people to care about robots like they're people. That's correct. I don't know what to think about this. I mean, if you see this, you got to watch this trailer. Tell me if I'm overreacting. Have you seen it, Kenny? Yeah, I've seen it, and I think you're overreacting. <laughs> okay, but just hear me out. It's like, so this robot is born into the wild 
which with a bunch of animals. Well, I guess so. This robot wakes up on a strange planet. It doesn't know where it is. It doesn't know who it is or but what it is. It's common animals that we seem to know about, like raccoons and foxes yeah, yeah, and true. birds and yeah. And the animals that find this thing don't like it very much at all. They think it's weird. Because it is weird. It's a robot living in their habitat. Well, think about it. These animals are like, what is this? This is out of place. You don't belong here. You're a computer. We're animals. Right. We don't need a computer. But then there's this little baby chick that is seemingly born and starts hobbling to follow the robot. (laughs) And they become friends. And then by the end of the trailer, the whole animal kingdom seems to love this robot and it really does. Now, it made me feel a little emotional for a second. I was like, oh, that's so nice. I said, Wait a minute. This is robot propaganda. Well, in the previews <laughs> that I saw yesterday, this robot doesn't really know what it is. So it's trying to also mimic some of these animals. Like it's trying to be a crab or it's trying to be like a bird or a squirrel. Yeah, but it's trying you, to find its place. Did you feel unsettled or is it just me? You know, what I think is funny is that when they make robot movies for adults, this is just me. This is, this is okay. my Go thought ahead. process. When they make robot movies for adults, they make it seem like robots are taking over the world or the worst thing ever. But then when they make robot movies for kids, they cater in a way where it's like robots are friendly. And I think it's done on purpose. I think at one point we may be working and walking amongst robots and they'll be working with us. Yeah. And so if they portray them to be very kind to the younger generation, to, to children, then they will be more willing to accept robots into their workspace and their life more so than we will. Well, perhaps you just nailed it. Maybe I've been conditioned to own only assume robots are going to be taking over right. and then dominating us. And now they've like sort of changed their tune on that. And it's like, nah, they're, they're our friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is a story. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's a work of fiction. It's based on a book. I mean, come okay, on. You're the guy in the robot takeover movies. You realize that, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, by, here he is. Someone had a f- clever idea to write the, this yeah. book. Yeah, I'm the wild scientist who's going <laughs> to probably be right. You're the guy who's saying, you're wacky. Well, yeah. Well, okay. Star Wars was robot and alien propaganda then you know what though i don't foresee like where the aliens are coming into the picture anytime soon the robots are here i'm not worried about it looks good it's getting killer reviews it's got 98 yeah, percent on rotten tomatoes 98 percent the best animated movie of the year nope the best movie of the year the best the movie ever <laughs> well, and i'm sold like i gotta see it okay i gotta see it like it with that kind of review so anyway i don't know what that means maybe i'm being a little bit too overly <laughs> careful here this edition of the tj show is sponsored by better help jbo you love learning new things i do yeah learning something new can help you discover a new you and as an adult sometimes it's hard to find time to learn new things. And just because it's back to school season and everyone's talking about the kids, why can't we go back to school? That's right. Right? This is a big part of us growing as people, constantly consuming new stuff, reconnecting with that sense of wonder. One of the ways that one can benefit from therapy is by this, just figuring out how do I make time? How do I take care of myself? How do I keep growing and learning? And I would encourage you to try it. If you've ever had a little tiny thought in the back of your head, maybe therapy could be for me. Go to betterhelp.com slash TJ. Fill out the questionnaire there. Get linked up with a licensed therapist. If for some reason it's not a fit, you can switch therapists anytime. No additional fee. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash TJ today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash TJ. George Clooney and Brad Pitt's new movie, Wolves, is on Apple TV Plus September 27th. That's where I want you to be now. So if you want to see George Clooney and Brad Pitt, go to Apple TV+. Plus. You got to start the story there. Or if you want to see Brad Pitt and George Clooney, go to Apple TV+. Plus. I am enjoying the show. And if you want to see their new movie, Wolves. You can't do it? I'm going to help you out. I can do it. So do it. Definitely go to Apple TV+. Plus. Admit it. It's cool. Okay, fine. It was very cool. Wolves. Streaming September 27th on Apple TV+. Plus. Rated R. This is the TJ Show. I wasn't trying to freak anyone out. But a little earlier on the program, I mentioned that I saw a trailer for this movie coming out. It's called The Wild Robot. Mm -hmm. And in a nutshell, it shows a robot out in the wild with a bunch of animals. The animals don't like it at first. Then it seems like the whole animal kingdom embraces the robot. It just seems a little bit like a robot propaganda film. Mm -hmm. But it's a kid's movie, and I know that sounds really weird when I say that. (laughs) But I'm a little nervous about what's happening. Mike in Mobile, Alabama, you wanted to comment on this movie, The Wild Robot. Are you in line, ready to see it? 
Well, I haven't uh, heard about this particular movie, but it did bring something to mind. Uh, I think everybody remembers The Matrix. Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's the first thing that popped in my head. You know, technology is advancing, so who knows? You know, we may get to that, that point at, you know, some time where we are walking, like it was mentioned, amongst robots. Yeah, that's Jabo's mm-hmm. theory. I mean, look, yeah. it's already sort of happening, right? I was at a restaurant the other night, and they've got a, now an even more advanced robot that brings food to our table. I mean, it doesn't look like a human, but it's a robot doing something amongst us humans. Right. Yeah, I don't know that we're, we're too far off from that. Uh, you know, on a more uplifting note, Mike, what is the most exciting part of your life right now? The most exciting part of my life? Well, this past weekend, actually, there was a Comic-Con, and I got to join that, and Steve from Blue's Clues was there. Oh, so that was wow. Fun. Steve, that is awesome. How was that experience, Mike? Oh, it was great. Uh, me and my wife, and I, I, we brought our daughter to meet him as well. Oh, oh I love look it. at that. How old's so your daughter? Great. Uh, she's almost, she'll be two come January. She cared about Steve from Blue's Clues? Well, we want to introduce her. Oh, okay. Got <laughs> Steve was a good man. Steve is a good man. Yeah. How, how do you like being a dad of a two-year-old? My, my youngest is four. I wouldn't trade it for anything. That's a great answer. That's you know, sweet. I like most of being a dad, but to be totally honest, there are these moments where you're like, wow, I don't know how to deal with this. This is like, where's the playbook for this? And I've had to spend mm-hmm. incessant amounts of time reading parenting books, talking to other parents. And that has actually started to introduce a lot of peace into my life, getting answers about these seemingly impossible things to solve. It's amazing. All this wisdom's out there. People have walked our paths many times before. Oh, definitely, definitely. And I may not have read any books uh, on parenting, but we do have a lot of friends who are parents and they kind of, well, they didn't really guide us, but you know, they kind of gave us little tips. They've got know? the cheat codes, yeah. right? You want to get through the level and, and survive you need it? That. Yeah, yeah, with you, anything in life. You need some codes. That's cool. Well, Mike, listen, we're so grateful that you're turning your radio on. Thank you for choosing our show. I know you have a lot you can listen to today. Absolutely, but I choose to listen to you guys. Hey, Mike. That's nice. <laughs> Thank you. I love what I hear. You have a great day, Mike. You call us anytime, okay? You're a friend of the show. You have a great day as well, and thank you. All right, All right you take bye. care. Bye. Bye. Sorry, I hung up on him too early. Oh, man, you keep doing that. I was, it was an accident. I feel like it's on purpose. No, like, you, don't I, to, you don't want us to tell people bye. No, I want people to say <laughs> bye back to you. I know everyone's having a good time. It was an accident. I won't do it again. I was told that Kenny has a request of me. First a question. Uh, I got you a really cool birthday gift, and you seem to really like it. It was a magnet fishing gift. Have you opened it yet? <laughs> so you haven't even taken it home. No, I haven't taken it home yet. Wow. Well, the magnet fishing gift is very thoughtful because I do want to find treasure. I really do. I've known you for a long time, and I'm not really good at getting gifts, and this was one that I was proud of. I listened to you, and I got you something that I thought you would really like. It yep. is a very great gift, and you were excited when you got it, TJ. I was. To be totally honest, it's nothing personal against you, Kenny. I really appreciate your thoughtfulness. And my birthday was back in June. First of all, I don't know where to magnet fish. because and the a concept- body of water. Just yeah. find one. Listen, in theory, it sounds like a great idea. You take this little fishing rod thing. It has a magnet at the end. <laughs> you throw it into any body of water, which I don't even know if that's legal. That's the first thing. And then it's you fine. you take it out and it catches anything that's metal. People have found treasure, but oftentimes it's aluminum cans. Well, if you're not going to use it, Can I use it? Can I borrow it? Can I take it out and go magnet fishing? You want to take the gift you gave me back? I don't want to do that, but I feel like this box collecting dust is doing nobody any good. Yeah, you could take it. See what you get from it. I I will even like offer you like, let's say, um, you know, maybe 60% of whatever I find is yours. Yeah, I'm in. But why would you offer that? You literally... Bought the gift, <laughs> and you're gift? doing the work. Yeah, that was the worst negotiation yeah, ever. Yeah, I would have sure. offered him anything. He had already said yes before you threw in that, I will <laughs> give you 60%. I'm so bad at you're this. You're worldwide <laughs> negotiating, bro. Oh. No. Okay, so if you find a piece of gold that's worth a couple grand, I'll get 60% of it. That's Wow. A, what a birthday gift. That would be amazing. That's a true gift right yeah, there. Yeah, seriously. Well, no, Kenny, seriously, why don't you take it learn how to use it, and then you can teach me how to use it. And this way, it's like a complete gift, so I don't have to do a lot of work and figure out how to use it. I like that. The magnet fishing kit has instructions that tells you how to use it, TJ. You don't need Kenny to do it. The other thing that I'm a little bit nervous about is if you throw that in a body of water, and let's say you pull out a gun or something like a weapon. 
I've thought about that. You know, people throw things in bodies of water all the time. I don't, I don't really want to know what's going on, and I don't want to get involved with something like that. So I'm a little bit shy about that, too. Well, if that happened, I think I would, ha- I would call the authorities right away. Yeah, but now you're involved in, like, a case. That's cool. Come on. No, man. it's not. <laughs> Cut the line. Cut the line. That's Keep it moving. Cool. No, I mean, it just seems like you're inviting all this. Like, I'm nervous to add in anything extra to do into my life. So I feel like if I do pull something like that out, I'm going to have to now get involved with the cops and tell them what I found. But the likelihood of that happening is slim. Will it happen? Possibly maybe to some people, but it won't happen to all people who no, decide to go magnet fishing. I know. I just don't want to. That's wanna... like saying, well, I don't want to drive my car because I might get into a car accident. It's like, but you spent the last 25 years driving and never get into an accident. I know, but the amount of people who find treasure, it's such a rare amount. We see those come up, what, once every couple of years? Well, recently there was a couple, I think in a in Central Park or some lake in New York, they pulled a safe out that had hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah, there was that one. Yeah, and the people who have found treasure, you hear about those stories, but there are stories that haven't been told. That's true. So, yeah, not everyone goes to the news with their stories. Right. I'm going to the news. And also, Chibo, you told me about a gaggle of old ladies, and they mm-hmm. go and they go into a pond, Yeah, and they, they clean out... <laughs> The pond. Yeah. yeah, they're in Cape Cod and they get together. They're like in their 60s. That's what they, you know, they call themselves old ladies. And they go to these different bodies of water in Cape Cod and ponds and they'll just fish out a bunch of stuff. Like they found things from, yeah, aluminum cans, but they've also found baseballs. They found um, porcelain toilet seats. And that's who wouldn't laugh at that, pulling a toilet seat out of yeah. the pond. We got to get them on the show if that's possible. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm definitely trying to okay. do that. Yeah, th- we, we really care about guests like that. So if you're doing anything weird, you make sure you reach out to us. We yes, want to please. hear about it. I'm looking forward to the 50th season of Saturday Night Live kicking off this weekend. Quite a feat to be going for that long, 50 seasons. Yeah. It's incredible. Gene Smart is going to be the guest host and the musical guest, Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll seems like, like a lot of Jelly fun. Jelly Roll. Yeah. Nate Bergazzi is the following weekend. Ariana Grande. Michael Keaton is hosting on the 19th of October. John Mulaney. Okay. It looks He's like that's great. all that's out there so far, right? Yeah, they'll continue to announce more hosts. But what I'm excited for is coming up in February, they're doing a three-hour 50th anniversary celebration. I remember the 40th was so much fun yeah. to watch. I'm surprised. That felt like it just happened. Yeah, I know. What, what does that mean? I remember where I was the very first time I heard about the show. I was at my grandpa's house, and one of my uncles said, hey, you watching SNL tonight? And I said, what is that? I didn't even know what it was. And that night, we sat down. We watched it with the family for the first time. I don't know why I was up that late, but it opened my eyes to like a whole different world of comedy, and I was so interested in it. I loved the fact that it was live, and then you never knew it was going to happen. And then, I, I gosh, I don't remember when it was, but there was a year where Ashton Kutcher hosted and a friend of mine invited me to go to the show and I got to actually go to see it there. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. And it was the actual show. It wasn't the taping beforehand and it was so fun. It was an incredible production. You got to see what they were doing off the camera. People are running around goofing on each other, like chasing each other, at least that night. And I was like, wow, this is super cool. I wouldn't mind being in the audience. That'd be really awesome. I mean, if I'm going to watch it, let me watch it from there. You know what I'm saying? You would absolutely love it, J-Bo. Yes, Kenny. You shouldn't say that so loud in front of producer Heather. I've heard she's been trying to get tickets to see Saturday Night Live for years. Yeah, there's a lottery you can sign up for. You just like sign up with your email and stuff. And I've done it like for the last, I don't know, I can't even tell you how many years and I've never gotten tickets. Yeah, it's a tough ticket to get. It really is hard to get, but you got to keep going, Heather. Don't give up. You got to keep trying, girl. Okay. Yeah, the only time I ever got picked to go to a show, like that was through a radio thing. But uh, when actually, when I was a kid, I was trying to get on get into Conan O'Brien's audience and I got picked and I was like whoa this is amazing I think we got like four tickets my buddies were all excited to go and then it happened to be around the time where there were all these anthrax scares Mm -hmm. and my parents wouldn't let me go I'm like guys for Conan it's worth it (laughs) let me come Uh, on we'll hold our breath most of the time listen you sound sound pretty lucky you get picked to be in an audience for Conan, for SNL. I think you should go in for producer Heather and get her tickets. <laughs> well, You'll have better luck than her. The SNL is because I, I had a friend who knew someone. But still, but yeah. luck. Yes, producer Heather. I did get a chance to go see a David Letterman taping when he was you know, still hosting the show. So oh, that's fun. That was cool, yeah. Okay, cool. That's super cool. 
Jean Smart, she was in, uh, is it Homeward Bound? Yeah, she was in Homeward Bound. Wow, um, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. That was before they really knew how to get animals to talk. But yeah, <laughs> these animals, they all got lost and she was the mom, right? I, I believe so, but I think she's known now for her role in Hacks. Depends who you ask. Yeah. I know her from Homeward Bound. Dogs rule, cats drool, right? Or was that the other way around? No, it's cats rule, dogs drool. That's it. She had something to do with that. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. ABC Wednesday, October 9th. Y'all can play all day. We want books. We want paper towels in the classroom. Bet you want raises, too. I'm still waiting on the paper towels. Abbott Elementary returns with a new season. We asked the district for more after-school programs. They gave us $50 for class pets instead. Critics cheer. Abbott Elementary continues to be one of the funniest and most beloved shows on TV. What y'all doing out there? Taking bribes. Proud of y'all. Abbott Elementary. Season premiere Wednesday, October 9th on ABC and stream on Hulu. This is the TJ Show. Jabo, I see you over there watching bear videos. We can't help it, right? We see him. We got to watch him. Yeah, I know. Kenny was watching it, and I had to lean over and just look. Yeah, the latest in the bear collection, the internet bear collection, is yes. there's a guy coming out of his garage, and these two bears are just like right next to the dude, and he's clapping in their face. And I keep seeing this video pop up. It must, I think my phone knows I love bear videos at this point, but you guys are getting the feed. It's an amazing video. And then he gets in his car, starts honking at him, yeah. and they yeah. leave. The bear, before he gets in his car, the bear is like charging at him. And he's just clapping like, hey, hey, like it's nothing. I would have been screaming. Yes. Can we get that guy on the show? I've DM'd him. I'm actually okay, talking good. with him as we speak. So hopefully nice. he'll really? be able to come on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've communicated back and forth. It's just he's in Vancouver, British Columbia. So we're trying to coordinate a good time for him to call in. What's happening in the world of news today? Well, in a different bear related incident, authorities in Colorado say the back to school season is off to an unusual start because a bear found its way into a middle school cafeteria earlier this week. Oh, boy. The bear was hungry. He knew where to go. <laughs> yeah, they're smart. Mm-hmm. They even, I bet he could prepare a meal if you give him a knife. <laughs> you know what it is? He smelled that square pizza and he was like, yes, yep. I want some of that. <laughs> you don't see that swimming around in nope. the water. I want one of those. Do they have video of this? I believe there is some video of this surveillance video from the middle school. It took a couple of different sheriff's offices and parks and wildlife personnel to get the black bear cub out of the cafeteria, students and teachers were evacuated into other buildings on the campus while responders worked to, I love how they describe it, clear the studious bear out of the school. Mm. Yeah. Bears are funny. And if you didn't hurt anyone, I bet the kids thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. It's something, you know, you'll tell that story for the rest of your life, yep. I'm sure. It was a cub. Where was its mama? Great question. I don't know that much. But they do say they got the cub out of the school and everybody was back to usual activities by 9.30 a.m. So I don't know what time their school day starts, but looks like they responded to this pretty quickly. What else do you have? Well, you know, we were just talking about how Spirit Halloween, the pop-up Halloween costume shop that has locations across the country, they're now offering Chipotle-themed Halloween costumes. And go figure, this just came across my computer. You can also... Now, dress like a couple of your favorite mall snacks. Mall snacks? Yes, yeah, Spirit Halloween has official partnerships with Auntie Anne's pretzels mm. and with Cinnabon. Oh. Yes. You say Auntie Anne's pretzels and my mouth immediately starts to water. Yes, Something right happens too. inside of my body. That's amazing. I yeah. mean, it's not amazing. The pretzels are amazing. I don't care about the costume. <laughs> yeah. yeah, these are adult costumes, uh, interestingly enough. You can go as an Auntie Anne's pretzel nuggets cup. And <laughs> those or, are great too, by the way. Yeah, they so are. Have awesome. you ever had those with the cinnamon on them? Oh, they're oh, delicious. So good. Amazing. And also for Cinnabon, they have an adult Cinnabon box 3D costume. So you can go as a Cinnabon box. Do you like drip the Cinnabon stuff all over you? I so you know you're so like, because yeah. you, you'll, you'll get a little of you all over everyone that you rub against. For what? real. I will walk up to that person and just lick it right off. Like, just, yeah. just lick it. So good. Well, mm. if that doesn't come with a costume, maybe get some silly string and maybe you can make 
something like that yourself. Yeah, a little a drizzle idea. with silly string. Well, Kenny, thanks. Our costume game is going to be strong this year. Lots of food options. Well, and keep in mind, too, if you go the Annie Ann's route, they do have the Auntie Ann's perfume. We reported on that a couple of weeks ago, right. so you can really go for it if that, you want. That's one of the cruelest things on earth. Imagine <laughs> smelling that smell and then realizing there's not a pretzel there. Yeah. Mm. What, what else do you have, Kenny? Well, there's a new study out of Texas A&M suggesting that engaging in hobbies, specifically ones that stimulate the mind, may be key in preserving cognitive function in older adults with mild cognitive impairment. Mm. Studying a musical instrument. That's one of them. Book clubs, chess matches, art classes, things like that. Word search, would that work? Or even like crossword puzzles? Yeah, yeah. I think all of those would fall into the category. But they took a bunch of senior citizens. They monitored them over an eight-year period. And it was very stark, the difference between those who participated in a lot of these mind-stimulating mm -hmm. hobbies versus those who didn't participate in any or moderately participated. But it's pretty impressive. And... They even go on to say that uh, those who participate in these mind-stimulating studies were able to maintain a stable source of cognitive function compared to those who didn't. Hey. That's great. Great news. It yeah. seems it works. You know, my 90, think now three, 93-year-old grandma is playing the piano every day. She's as sharp as could be. My that grandfather awesome. still playing the saxophone and learning new things, sharp as could be. It seems like there's a lot of data that suggests if we keep using our mind, there's good things that come out of it. Yeah, they say that like you can build up a reserve of cognitive function that you could use as you age. Love it. Ooh, Pretty amazing. So I got to start now then. Yeah. Fill up the learning gas tank. Never too early. Kenny, what else do you have? T.I. and his wife Tamika Tiny Harris have won their lawsuit against the company that makes LOL dolls. What did they do? So LOL surprise dolls have these OMG dolls. And by the way, if you don't know what these are, I'm so happy for you. Unfortunately, <laughs> I know what LOL dolls are. My kids love them. They're these little plastic balls wrapped in plastic, and you never know what toy you're going to get. It's like a mystery surprise toy. And my kids are obsessed with these things. They're expensive. Yeah, my nieces are the same way. Yeah, and like when it comes to birthdays or holidays, they ask for these, and it's like, stop buying my kids. And then the dolls have all these different color hair, and they're, they're wearing like, you know, multi-colored outfits. Yeah, and, and they have accessories and everything. Oh, it, it, a massive waste of money. <laughs> massive waste of money. So T.I. and Tiny, back in 2009, they formed this girl group, a music act called the OMG Girls. And according to Rolling Stone, the jurors in this case found that more than a dozen LOL surprise OMG dolls infringed on the trade dress and misappropriated the name, image, and likeness of the all-female band that the two formed back in 2009. Really? So they yeah. won? Yeah, 70, $71 million. Get out of here. Good for them. Wow. Well, you know, that's like a drop in the bucket for those LOL dolls because <laughs> they're so expensive. Right. Seriously. <laughs> I'm sure they could uh, pay that with a sneeze. I'm sure they make $71 million during the Christmas season alone. Yeah, but that is... So do they rip off their look? Yeah, that's essentially mm -hmm. what it is. These dozen or so dolls did look just like how the OMG girls used to dress. Wow. Uh, and over the years, Tiny has been calling them out for years about the similarities. She just posted an Instagram post last week with a side-by-side -side comparison of the girls next to the dolls with similar outfits and hairstyles. I mean, but even the name, LOL Surprise OMG Dolls. Yeah. You know? You'd think that they would be less obvious about stealing hey. an image or like maybe be inspired by it and, <laughs> and twisted enough so that there was no connection. Right. Or you think That's they just weird. wouldn't steal somebody's image and well, just yeah. create their own thing. They're would... a toy... <laughs> creator that would be ideal yes kenny what else do you have you've heard that there are a few authors including sarah silverman the popular comedian who are suing OpenAI, the makers of chat gpt claiming that they used copyrighted works to power the technology yes yeah. sir well isn't that what it is like isn't mm -hmm. there just tons of books and articles and other people's work loaded into it yeah it, it gets complicated open ai did admit that it scoured the internet for publicly available data some of it was copyrighted but essentially there's these lawsuits going on and for the first time open ai is essentially opening the gates they're going to allow access to its training data for review on whether these copyrighted works were illegally used to power the chatbot. Wow. I thought, and from what I understand of Elon's side of the story, 
ChatGPT was supposed to be open from the very beginning. That's why it was called OpenAI. Yeah, but they're very protective of their technology, especially these training data sets. And they're allowing these lawyers for the authors to go into the chat GPT offices and essentially go into this dark room that's not connected to the internet. Ooh, they're limited. Creepy. They wow. won't be able to bring recording devices. If they're going to use a computer to take notes, it has to be under the direct supervision of huh. a representative from OpenAI. But we may get to the bottom of this now that this door has been open. All of that, and they have nothing to hide. They're not hiding anything. Wow. Come on. Anytime people that powerful say, all right, you want to see something? Come into this dark room. I go, you know what? I'm fine. I'll see you later. <laughs> what a, what a, I don't know if they're going to give them a heavy hint or what's going to happen well, here. Well, I guess there are some trade secrets that they don't want competition to find out. So they're opening the doors to the data, but exactly how the technology works, what it does, how it learns. They don't want you know Microsoft or Apple AI or whoever else the competition is to, to learn what they're doing that's special. They hmm. better, better bring someone in there who understands computers. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Kenny, that's also kind of funny. It's so complex. It's like, yeah, yeah sure. Take a look, guys. Yeah. Zero, 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 one, five, six, seven, eight, zero, 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 on Broadway, he's a two-time Tony Award winner and a Lifetime Achievement Award winner. Yeah, he was so talented. And people seem to love him. You've seen a lot of other celebrities say, oh, I met James and this is what happened. I met him here and this is what... And it seems like everyone just loved him. Yeah, I mean, he won a Tony in 1969 for his acting work in The Great White Hope and in 1987 for his role in the play Fences. The Lifetime Achievement Award came in 2017. The president of the Broadway League said that James Earl Jones was a true pillar of the Broadway industry, providing unforgettable experiences to multiple generations of theater goers. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear they're doing that. Kenny, thank you for keeping us somewhat informed. That's what's happening. 